So we've already looked at an introduction to parametric curves and what they look like. And here we're going to look at a particular example um, and kind of explore it a little bit. I've got a parametric equation, x equals 6 cosine of t and y equals 6 sine of t. And I am graphing it on the time interval negative pi to pi over 2. So what I like to do is if, I, if it's not already provided for me, I'll make myself a table. I'm in this table. It's gonna be it's gonna have three columns because I'm gonna need one for time, one for the x coordinate, and one for the y coordinate. And so my time, my time ranges from negative pi to pi over two. And so the question, the problem asks for the endpoints of the curve. So that's easy enough. We just need to plug in negative pi in for t, get the get the point and then plug in pi over 2 in for t and get the point and then we, we write down the answer. We'll explore a little more than just that, but for the moment let's just answer the question. So when you plug in negative pi in for t, you get for the x-coordinate 6 times cosine of negative pi and the cosine of negative pi is negative 1. So it's 6 times negative 1 which is negative 6. When you plug it uh, negative pi in for uh, t in the y equation, you get 6 times sine negative pi, and the sine of negative pi is 0. So you get 6, 0. When you plug in pi over 2, in for the x, uh, in for t in the x equation, you get 6 times cosine of pi over 2, which is 0, because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And then when you plug it in for the y, you get 6 times the sine of pi over 2, which is 6 times 1, which is 6. And so if we just plot those two points, negative 6, 0, and 0, 6. Uh, again, this is when t equals, you don't have to write this, but this is when t equals negative pi, just to, to note. And this is when t equals pi over 2. So, you know, pi seconds ago, the, the point was here. And in pi over 2 seconds, it's going to be right here. So let's just fill, so the answer to the question, the endpoints are negative uh, six zero and zero six. So there's there's answering the question. Um, but what about sort of the details? What happens in between? Let's take care of that. So in between negative pi and pi over two, I want to pick a nice convenient values for. For t, which hopefully will sort of indicate uh, indicate what's happening sort of in between this. What what is this curve actually going to look like? Or if we imagine a particle tracing it, where, where does it go? So we plug in negative pi over two, and six times cosine of negative pi over two gives you zero, and six times sine of negative pi over two is negative six, because sine of negative pi over two is negative one. Six times cosine of zero is six and 6 times sine of 0 is 0. And so let's put those points in. 0, negative 6. This is t equal to negative pi over 2. And then when t equals 0, we get um, 6, 0. <clears throat> okay, so this, this particle will uh, started here at negative six zero, ended at zero six, and had to have hit all those other points on the way. Uh, so we're not quite sure what's happening in the in between. So if we take out our calculator and uh, explore it a little bit, we'll be we'll know for sure. Um, so we're going to do that in a second. Um, but the curve we will end up seeing looks like this. So it's like a it's like three fourths of a circle, and it was traced in this direction. So we'll take out our calculator, and we'll examine that. So I'm gonna go again to mode. Make sure I'm in parametric mode. Also make sure you're in radians because we are graphing a trig. Uh, our equations have trig functions in them. Go to your y or x1 equal 
and put in 6 cosine t and then in your y put in 6 sine t let's go to window t min and t max well our t min we want to make negative pi t max we want to make pi over 2 t step keep it at point 1 x min let's make that negative uh, let's make a negative 7 so we can get a little bit of space on the sides and make our x max 7 x scale can be 1 y min make that negative 7 x max uh, y max 7 y scale 1 and we graph it and we see it looks like at least on my calculator it looks like an uh, it looks like an oval or an ellipse but it really is a circle it's just that the unfortunately the calculator kind of compresses the the intervals a little bit um, but it really is a circle it's three-fourths of a circle um, and so how could we get the full circle? Well, what we could do is we could change our y, or I'm sorry, our t max. Rather than go from negative pi to pi over 2, let's make it go from negative pi to pi. So let's make our t max pi. And we get, so let me hit graph. And sure enough, we get the whole circle. So I'll just kind of note that in our picture here All right this is also t equal to pi and if you kind of keep going either direction this this particle if you imagine is just going to keep retracing the circle so so you can get sort of different pieces of this whole graph depending on the time interval you choose now, I want to focus your attention on this here, eliminating the parameter. What does that mean? It means to rewrite or write the equation that just has the x's and the y's. In other words, the ones that you're so used to, right? In other words, eliminating the parameter means what is what's the equation of this curve using just x's and y's. And so what you might, if you remember from algebra, algebra 2, circles have equations. There are circles that are centered at the origin have equations x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And so this equation here, just by looking at it, is x squared plus y squared equals uh, the radius is 6, so 6 squared, 36. So how can we get that? I mean, let's say we didn't, we didn't have the picture in front of us. How can we get that from our parametric equations? I'm going to show you right here. So what you, all you really need to do is um, simply write down x squared plus y squared to start. So the reason I'm doing that is because I know, um, I know that if I square the cos, you know, I square the the cosine and I square the sine, and if I add them together, I might end up getting this in the picture somehow. And we all know what this equals. If you didn't forget already, it equals one. So if I do x squared plus y squared. So that means I'm really just squaring both sides of of this here. So when I square the x squared, I get the x side, I get x squared. If I square the 6 cosine t side, I get 6 cosine of t squared, that's my x. And then if I square the y's, I square the y, that becomes 6 sine t squared. And so now watch what happens. If I square this, this is 6, six squared times cosine squared. So 6 squared is 36. Cosine t squared is, well, it's just cosine t squared, or cosine squared. Again, over here, 6 squared is 36. And sine squared is, looks like that. And I can factor out a 36. 
from both of those terms. And I'm left with this, but again, we know that this here is just equal to 1. So it's 36 times 1, which is 36. Okay, so, so by eliminating the parameter, that means to write our equation just in terms of x and y. Okay, so that graph up there is also known as x squared plus y squared equals 36. In parametric mode, it's known as x equals 6 cosine t, y equals 6 sine of t.